Hello there, so... Excuse me, what? Metadata? That, that can't be serious, right? Oh, April 1st landed on a Sunday this year, and YouTube videos are by law required to be jokes today. Haha, <laughs> okay then. Metadata is something every mapper encounters, sure, but you'd never consider it important at all. Like, you load up a new map and you're hit with a metadata section, where you fill in some boxes and... that's it. Is it really possible to make a video about something as minor as this? I'd like to say no, I really would, but metadata has somehow risen to become a prominent aspect of Osu mapping. Seriously. If you ever keep up with map threads or discussions, you'll see that some of the most common reasons for map disqualification are metadata mistakes, and along with those disqualifications are often grossly detailed discussions about how people literally fill in these boxes. These discussions have advanced to the point that teams of people have formed dedicated to upholding metadata standards and improving those standards in the most minute ways possible for every niche that exists. You think placing circles is hard? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. The truly most difficult part of mapping is knowing how to type. Exaggeration aside, metadata is no joke on Osu, and that leads people to ask, why? Though what's more beneficial to ask is, why now? Metadata hasn't always had such a big focus, so what's changed and how have those changes affected the mapping world in general? First, I should really specify what aspects of metadata I'm talking about. Map metadata is rarely a concern for anyone. That includes the creator name, difficulty name, and tags. All of those are a mapper's choice usually with their own specifications, like difficulty names have to follow a spread. The artist, title, and source fields on the other hand are the metadata areas that have garnered a lot of attention in the last few years. These are all dictated by a song being mapped and are therefore considered beyond a mapper preference for the most part. Mappers must comply with exactly what musicians publicly distribute for their names, song titles, plain text versions of both of those, and where their songs were popularized like anime titles or video games. Not following official artist publications, according to the ranking criteria, is disallowed and therefore unrankable. That's how things are now. Metadata more than four years ago wasn't on the same level of perfection at all though. You had Vocaloid songs whose artists were labeled as a Vocaloid being used, anime openings just got a TV size slapped on the end too, whereas now you can find all sorts of variations depending on the song, and a bunch of similar ideas. Precision or accuracy wasn't the aim here, base level understanding was. People just stuck with whatever they thought made sense, which was okay in some cases, and had problems in others. Over time, anyone could see that there were contradictions in how people handled metadata. Some maps of the same songs ended up having different information, like these two ranked in 2013. The first uses the artist Japusu in the title Heisei Kotaku Rhythm, while the second, ranked a few months afterwards, uses the artist Zips in the title Heisei Cataclysm, with a source from some Japanese dude on the thread. Is he correct? Was the first one correct? I don't know, but I do know that looking for a specific song and seeing two different ones is confusing, so the changes that came along with the formation of the Quality Assurance team appeared to be a good thing. It's really weird to think about how much of mapping is connected to this BAT-QAT split event. As you should already know, the QAT was initially established to assure the quality of maps promoted by newbie map nominators. They checked a lot of mapping-related stuff, like if a map broke the ranking criteria, or if a map was complete garbage, or most importantly for our sakes here, the QAT checked if a map's metadata was correct. A lot of this effort was headed by Quan, a member of the QAT as of the start of 2015, most well known for her respectable work in the metadata department. The QAT pushed for an objective metadata standard, wherein a song's artist, title, and source fields were all referenced from official sources. That meant no iTunes, no Amazon, no wikis, no databases, only sources officially linked to an artist like their website or original publication. With solid research backing metadata claims, there was no way anyone could argue with the disqualification, and so it worked well for the systems in place. This information wasn't always easy to find though, especially given the huge amount of Eastern music on Osu that isn't practically searchable through Google. Sometimes you need to go scrounging for CD scans or that one tiny line of text on a website that contains the information necessary. Some members of the QAT became pretty good at this, but it might not have been so reasonable to expect all beatmap nominators to handle it equally well. Yes, you heard right. Beatmap nominators had learned the art of official, objective metadata too. Their role was on the line after all, thanks to the BN ranking system. I've talked about this before, but as a short recap, BN ranking was basically a way to sort nominators based on their activity and competency. Nominate more maps, you earn points. If those maps receive disqualifications, you lose points. Going by the old impact score chart, which determined how severely disqualifications affected points, metadata was in a position that did make a difference. Lose too many points as a nominator and you're kicked from the nomination group, so nominators were required to check metadata on maps if they wanted to maintain their position. 
I think this system is partially why strict metadata is treated in such high regards now. So many people in the past grew up following one standard that it spread throughout the mapping community as the one and only truth. Even as BN ranking was discontinued and the QAT stopped checking every individual qualified map for problems, this metadata standard was and still is being upheld. Wait, QAT not checking qualified maps anymore, doesn't that mean metadata isn't enforced either? That's what you'd expect, but... No. Every aspect of map checking was dropped, aside from metadata. This is something the QAT still monitor for all qualified maps, marking a map as checked by setting these language and genre labels. If you look through the qualified section, you'll see that the latest maps are always going to be unspecified other, while those afterwards will be properly labeled. Metadata checking is why. Well actually, saying that the QAT check metadata isn't completely accurate now either. Quan and a few other QAT members manage metadata for a while, however with Quan's retirement from the team near the end of 2017, the job of checking maps was partially outsourced to the community. A small group of mappers and modders now check metadata as well, publicly logging information for future reference and notifying the QAT of anything faulty for disqualification. Now. I feel like I have a good understanding of mappers. Every week I come here and explain how the mapping clock ticks to ordinary Yosu players like you who aren't fully invested in this confusing side of the game. Even with that in mind, I don't get it. I legitimately don't get the mapping world's fascination with metadata. I don't get how people can go from making beat maps and providing constructive mapping feedback to doing complex searches for the exact way an artist prefers their name to be written and talking about how to romanize different languages. Metadata just seems so unrelated to what I find appealing about mapping that I'm honestly confused by how so many people can find it worth investment, especially when handled in a strict, practically automatable way. As an outsider to the side of mapping, some of the loopholes that get through the care put towards metadata seem kinda counterproductive. Like, relying on official sources should get rid of the weird inconsistencies like those I described earlier, but what about when there's contradicting official sources? Ito Kashitaro and Ito Kashitaro are both valid names for this artist according to official information, so mappers are allowed to choose from both and make for an inconsistent catalog of ranked maps. Plus, new official sources can sometimes pop up, making for even more confusion. Mirami Pop turning into... Diao Yezong featuring Murami Pop is a pretty standout example of that. I understand this is just following each artist's intent, it's correct information, but as a semi-recent proposal has stated, is handling metadata like that really for the best? Several months ago, Ephemeral posted this to the ranking criteria subforum. Rather than following exactly what's correct, even when it's dumb, this promotes OSU-specific metadata standards that would replace the old method of its handling on the ranking criteria. Being both recognizable and understandable was a number one priority here. The proposal pushed for consistency between songs and artists, along with consistent English syntax, regardless of artist preference. If officially pushed to the ranking criteria, this change would have made everything about metadata less complex, reducing the amount of overhead required for individual map checking and therefore disqualification. That's a big if though. The proposal was initially made 7 months ago, some discussion was had and it faded from everyone's attention. Until 2 months ago when it was revived and then died almost immediately after. This is the fate of a lot of ranking criteria proposals sadly. Quan even made a metadata proposal 10 months ago and it was brought to a standstill. Without someone to adamantly push things along, the ranking criteria doesn't progress. Metadata improvements on the ranking criteria were therefore looking grim, yet just a week ago that changed. Okuratu, the guy responsible for a lot of the ranking criteria's upkeep, combined both proposals into one, and is currently accepting feedback on it. I'd give it a 99% chance of not falling inactive like the previous ones, so you should expect this to make its way to the ranking criteria fairly soon. With it, metadata will make more sense to outsiders, and hopefully people like me won't have to think too hard about what to write in these boxes. PG fan from the future here. In the short time since this video was made and waiting for upload, the thread here went out of control, so uh, view that at your own risk. Back to the past. More importantly though, this metadata stuff is the final part of the general ranking criteria that needs to be updated. When it's fully amended in what I assume to be a few weeks, the entirety of the ranking criteria will no longer be utilizing any content written in like 2011. About time, and with that will probably come a slight change in how the ranking criteria subforum works. We probably won't see any more huge proposals, but instead a lot more individuals posting their own single rule additions and changes. This was discouraged a couple years ago because everyone was told whole sections of the ranking criteria needed revision instead of single rules, but that's nearly done and we can move on. Thanks metadata, you're slow but you finally made it. So that should cover the topic in more detail than anyone needed. Metadata is going to be changing soon, in some ways reverting to the systems in place before anyone cared about it being correct, and as someone uninvolved in the metadata discourse, I like the direction it's going. The average player, meaning you, probably will too. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.